a supreme test of her diplomatic good manners, came on a trip to Morocco in 1980. The state visit got off to a bad start when she had to wait in her car for half an hour because the welcoming banquet wasn't ready. The king of Morocco was not a man noted for his punctuality, to put it uh, mildly. So one has to understand the nature of the monarchy in Morocco, uh, where the king is absolute, an absolute monarch. There's no good asking what time he's going to arrive anywhere. He arrives at the king's time. It became a nightmare for visit. He was enraged because he knew he was getting a very bad press in Britain. His press secretary would have given him stuff from the Sun and the Mail and so on, which was lethal. Things went from bad to worse at an open-air lunch in the desert the next day. The Queen was left in an open tent to watch tribal dancing, while King Hassan attended to more pressing business in his air-conditioned caravan. various displays which went on longer and longer. Excellent displays, but I think lunch had to be at four. I think the Queen thought it was time to have lunch, which about four o'clock. He had sent his Chamberlain to see the Queen to say, could she postpone by one hour? the dinner which she was host, held, uh, holding on Britannia that evening. And I received this message and I went to see the Queen and said, well, what do we do now? And she said, uh, well, of course, I can't change it because lots of people have been invited for such and such an hour and there's no way of reaching them all and saying, it's an hour later, but please tell the Chamberlain that uh, I quite understand if His Majesty is delayed. He arrived with some princes who had not been invited uh, and in a great rage because his suggestion had not been acted on. Absolute monarchs don't like to be disobeyed. The trip seemed on the brink of disaster. With the Queen, he conducted um, a fairly inane conversation about personalities. He was rather frightened of the Queen, I think, but with me, because he was in a furious temper, he was hissing in French. Uh, I'm not being treated like a gentleman. It's all going wrong. Uh, that uh, steel mission we were talking about on the train this morning, I'm not going to receive it. I don't have time. And what's more, your ambassador has to leave Morocco tomorrow. And, and I was quite inexperienced then. I didn't know what the hell to do. The royal advice was, stay cool, keep smiling, and do nothing. And this was right, because the next day it was all smiles and presents of carpets and everything was fine. And the ambassador in question was knighted by the Queen on Britannia. But the Moroccan saga wasn't over. Protocol obliged the Queen to invite King Hassan back to London. Her Majesty's Foreign Office had learned from the first visit. They sent a special envoy out to Morocco on a delicate mission. Well, I don't know how many people have had to go and confront an absolute monarch in an African country and tell him not to be late, but that's what I had to do. I uh, sort of felt my way into this conversation and uh, eventually he smiled and said, ah, yes, I see. You're telling me to be punctual. I think there were one or two occasions when he kept people waiting, but he certainly didn't keep the Queen waiting. <laughs> 